Hey folks, Mel the Train Shooter back in the studio and back with a Back to Basics video for you. And we're looking at PVA. Now, I didn't actually mean to do this video. I was actually sort of putting together some bits for a, watch a fast facts sort of still for my Let's Makes video. And I thought, well, if I'm doing all this anyway, I might as well refresh this video. Now, my very first video on YouTube was on PVA in the Back to Basics playlist. And... It's bloody awful. <laughs> Here, I'll check this clip out. Hi guys, and welcome to this Back to Basics series video on PVA glue. Now, see what I mean? <laughs> awful. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mel's come a long way. But not only that, Mel has used a lot of PVA in that time. I, I, I reckon probably about six gallons worth. <laughs> yeah, uh, if yeah, probably about six or seven gallons worth over the past few years since that video was made. And as part of that, I've learned a lot more about PVA. So this is one of those videos where it's a knowledge dump. Basically, I'm gonna do what all, all my friends recommend I don't do and give you everything I know up until this point. Okay, so we're gonna have a bit of a crash course on PVA, bring that previous video sort of up to spec and up to my current knowledge and then you know, maybe in a few more years, we'll come back when I've learned a little bit more about PVA and redo it. I'm reaching the sort of point now where learning is, uh, new things is taking longer and longer on subjects. So it may be a lot longer than a couple of years. I think it's been a four or five years since I did that PVA vid. I'm grey now. So let's have a chat about PVA. Come on down to the desk. Now, if you've done any sort of modeling, you will have come across PVA before, but yeah, quantities and types of PVA vary considerably. So let's let's start off with quantities basic. Okay, now this is basically hobbyist, craft person, full terrainiac, okay? Yeah, we're talking quarter of a litre, sort of half a litre, a litre, and then we're going up to the five litres, which is the, what should I, the gallon tubs. Okay, and if you're serious about terraining, you should be in the litre to the five litre category. Now, quick tip, do not buy your PVA from the hobby shop, okay? It, it will cost you more for a little tub from like your, your sort of war game suppliers, yeah, than it will cost for a litre, yeah, from, you know, your home bargains and, and your general bargain stores, okay? So, that's the key point. If you're getting into terrain, skip the wargaming store, start moving towards the craft stores and the, and the watcher at the DIY places. Now, very quickly, quick talk about PVA glue in general, okay? There's lots of different types of PVA. You can get industrial PVA, you can get washable PVA, which is this one, which I use quite a lot of. Uh, you can get raw PVA as well. Now, what that means is that certain PVAs, they all do pretty similar jobs, but they're slightly different. So for example, you had decorators PVA. This actually contains alcohol as well as water to thin it down. The reason being is the alcohol evaporates far quicker, which means it's dry, which means it's dry quicker. But the alcohol introduces certain problems with, you know, health and safety and that sort of stuff and can react with certain paints when you're mixing it and that sort of stuff. So really good for getting just generally things stuck down. But if you're gonna start mixing it with paint and doing other stuff and sealing, Decorator's PVA isn't the best because of the alcohol in it. You're better off going for a craft PVA. Yeah, your general purpose kids safe one. Okay, now uh, when it comes to the type of PVA to go for, the majority of PVAs are what we call watered down. Yeah, i.e. they're nice opaque white colors, i.e. a solid white color, yeah, rather runny. If, if you put it onto a card, it will run down the card. Now, in that case, with, with that sort of PVA, that's actually watered down PVA, yeah? I use a, a PVA from Baker Ross, yeah? It's a, a company in the UK, and it's raw PVA, and the difference is that if I put this on a card, and I'll show you a pic now, yeah, you can see there's that translucence around it, Okay, and that's what, how I know this is raw PVA and it is incredibly strong and it can be also watered down to normal PVA. So basically, by using Baker Ross, I probably get about eight liters of normal PVA out of a five liter tub once it's watered down, yeah? These are about 15 pound each, so it's a good buy. Now, finally, one quick mention because we can't really cover general PVAs 
yeah, polyvinyl acetate. Yeah, it is a vinyl, it is flexible, okay? But before we finish, I should mention Mod Podge, or Posh PVA as I prefer to call it. You'll see a lot of terrain builders use this for sealing and doing various stuff, and it does have its applications in terrain. But, okay, uh, Mod Podge, its main ingredient is just PVA. Yeah, but it has a gel component in it, which makes it a lot thicker to use, if I can open it. Yeah, so it's a lot thicker than normal PVA. Yeah, this is a little bit more runny than it usually is, but I've had it a while. But it is still PVA, and we'll talk about that when we get to the ceiling, but it's worth mentioning. Yeah, so there's our PVAs, folks, okay? The very basic ones, as I said, I recommend you go for more the kiddie ones than the, the, the what you've got, the industrial ones. And if you're going to be doing terrain in bulk, go check out Baker Ross and get yourself a five litre tub, a washable PVA from them. The washable is important because it works better with uh, sealing coats and stuff like that. So that's the basic PVA done. Next thing we're going to do is talk about using it. So we'll start with gluing stuff down. Come on. Now PVA is a great glue, but it works best on porous surfaces, so card, wood, polystyrene, anything it can soak into a bit and actually create a bond that's beyond the flat surfaces. Okay, so it is my go-to glue for gluing down uh, basic construction pieces, building foam board and that sort of stuff. Now what I've got here is I've got a bit of foam board, it's black foam board and I'm using this because you'll be able to see the PVA a lot better than if I use my white EPVC. And then what I've got is just a bit of polystyrene to represent a hill, okay? And normally, yeah, when you do PVA, what happens is you will get your hill, you will give it all a good coat and you will smooth it all the way over it, stick it down, yeah, give it a bit of a wiggle to get it spread out and you're done. Now that isn't the best way to glue things down because what happens is you get a big splodge of PVA all over this. Now PVA is air drying, so it needs contact with the air to dry. And what will happen is you will get, it will dry around the edge where the get, where air can get in between the bottom and the top, and it will dry around the edge, and that will fix, but it won't dry in the middle. So in fact, you'll have an incredibly weak bond there. Now there's two ways I generally use PVA for gluing. I either do it spotting or I do lines. So if I do spotting, yeah, I go one, two, three, lots of little spots on my piece. The idea being is there is plenty of room between them for the air to go. And then when I get my polystyrene, I push it down and give it a little wiggle. If I pull it back up, yeah, you can see all those air channels in between, which means all these blobs will dry completely, giving me a much stronger bond than if I'd coated the entire piece with PVA. Now, obviously, you may say, well, I'm not, not that confident with a couple of spots, Mel. I'm not, I'm not sure how I like that. Well, as long as you maintain that air channel, okay, you'll be fine. So, for example, let's say instead we do lines. And what we do is we come down, we go like that, and we go like that. We get some good lines, yeah, so they're continuous. Now, as you can see, I've still got air channels in there. So when I put my polystyrene down and I give it a bit of a squidge, yeah, I pull it back off, I've still got air. Yeah, so this will dry completely. And you can do all sorts of lines. I do all sorts of shapes under my buildings. A lot of the time, I'm quite worried about if they ever fall off, what people will see with my drawings and my PVA, to be perfectly honest, folks. But that's some simple tips for gluing it down. In. And what you'll get is, if you do it this way, your PVA will dry a lot faster and a lot stronger than just coating it all down, okay? So that's the basic premise for fixing what you call it sort of things down. Remember, in this specific application of getting things down, if you want to work quickly, builders PVA with that al alcohol in it will dry quicker. Okay, but normal PVA do just fine. Okay, right, with that in mind, now what we need to do is we need to have a look at using PVA to apply texturing to a piece. 
Now after using raw PVA to stick polystyrene down to our base and our big bulk materials, the next thing that we use PVA for is for texturing and applying our texture. Like on this cork bark hill here, how I've used it to apply all the rocks and that sort of stuff. Now, the main large rocks have all been applied with little blobs of raw PVA, but the ground itself has been applied with thin down PVA and there's a reason for that. I'm gonna take you through that now, but before I do, what I want to do is show you why you don't use raw PVA for applying a grit texture. So what I've got here is, I've got a bit of black foam board so you can see it. Yeah, my PVA, I'm going to apply it raw. Ah, so a good blob. And then I'm gonna get a brush, in this case, yeah, this is a hog's hair brush. And when it comes to working with PVA, I recommend hog's hair brushes. I do all my pa basic painting work and, and PVA work with hog's hair brushes, yeah? They're just more absorbent and they, they work better with water-based products. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this brush. I'm gonna spread this about a bit, yeah? And what you'll immediately notice is if I bring it up, is you can see streaks, okay? So if I come along, and I get just some very fine basing grit. And I sprinkle that on, like that. Give it a little bit of a, a shifty. And then, throw it on the floor. Yeah, if I bring that back up, yeah, you can still see the streaks. Basically, the volume of the PVA has caused a ridge, okay, on the actual, what you call it, on the actual piece. And this happens quite a lot, which is why you need to water down your PVA. Also, when it's really thick, you can have problems with it warping, yeah, because it's too strong. So thinning it down reduces its strength. You don't actually need much strength to glue a bit of grit on. Yeah, especially because you're gonna be painting over it and sealing it and flocking it and doing all that sort of stuff anyway. Yeah, so, Watering it down, it reduces the strength, reduces it from warping, but it also improves the gritting, okay? So let me take you through watering it down. So if I just move these across, yeah, over here I've got a basic cork bark hill. Yeah, it hasn't been textured. I'm not gonna fully texture it in, in this vid, yeah, because one time and two, you don't really need me to. But what I can do is show you some techniques. So very quickly, take the excess PV off there, right. Watering it down. We've got a plastic tub, okay? And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put our PVA in there. Now, we would normally water it down with water, okay? But I'm gonna give you a quick pro tip. Before you use water to water it down, yeah? Use paint. Just a little, yeah? About that much, yeah? Probably about a third of the PVA has gone in there. And if I give it a stir quickly, you'll see that it's gone to a, a rather browny PVA. It's carried the color really well, and PVA is good for that. Yeah, you would expect with it being white for it to sort of bleach it out, but it doesn't. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw in some high quality H2O or just tap water. Yeah, probably about the same amount as, as the paint I put in. Now, when you're doing this, what you can do is you can include a flow aid in it. A flow aid is anything that reduces the surface tension. Yeah, alcohol, you can thin PVA down with alcohol. It will make it dry a lot quicker. It is good, but I don't tend to use it because I don't like the fumes, okay? And also it does sort of mess around with the paint and that sort of stuff when you mix it. But it is an option if you're looking to get texture down really quickly and get it dried really quickly to thin it down with what you call it with alcohol. Yeah, but I'm just using bog standard water. As I said, you can use a flow aid, uh, when it comes to flow aid, yeah, I use, yeah, Windsor, no, is it Windsor Newton? Yeah, Windsor Newton's acrylic, what you call it, flow improver. This bottle cost me about eight pound, okay, I dilute it down by 20, one drop to 20 drops of water. Yeah, and I've used this bottle for the past three years. Yeah, and it's probably got another year or two in it, to be perfectly honest. So, here's my diluted flow aid, yeah, just that much, no more than that. And what that'll do is it'll help it flow everywhere, it'll help it flow in between the grit and secure it. Yeah, so what we end up with is we end up with that. 
Now, when it comes to painting your grit, okay, and I'm gonna do a very sloppy jo job now, but yeah, you will get the idea. I'm gonna come on, and I'm gonna paint it on. Yeah, perhaps I should have used a smaller brush than this, but the idea is to show you. Yeah, now one of the key things you can see is straight away, I can see brown and you can see brown. This is a brilliant way of knowing where you've got PVA because if I put white PVA on here, trust me, you always miss bits that you can't see because it's white on white and then when you add your texture, you end up with little clear white patches where the texture hasn't stuck because there was no PVA on it. Okay, so, trust me, that can be really annoying. Yeah, and so as you can see, as I put it down, yeah, if I bring it up, because we've thinned it down, it's nowhere near as thick, we haven't got anywhere near those ridge lines. And what I'm gonna do is, yeah, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna do a little bit of melon, a little bit of sprinkling. So we'll put some of these down, some of the, the sort of coarser stuff just around the edge. Yeah, and then we'll come in, and then we'll, we'll put our normal sand down. Yeah, now, one of the good things about using the watered down PVA is, as you can see, as I'm putting the sand down, you can see the darker patches. Let me bring this up for you. Yeah, you see how it's gone dark in certain places? That's the water and the flow aid. Whereas with this one, yeah, it's more of a contact adhesive. It's pretty light, and that's because the, the grit has gone down and stuck to the top. Because this is watered down, it's actually soaking up through the grit and creating a much stronger bond. Okay, now you'll notice I've only sprinkled to there. One of the other benefits of using a little bit of brown paint and only going so far is, yeah, obviously with large pieces, you're not gonna be able to get your PVA on the entire piece in one go, so you may have to do it in stages. And with that in mind, yeah, by using this, I can just sprinkle so far, leave that bit still as a wet PVA, come in with new fresh PVA, just like that. Get that out of there. And then simply continue my gritting. So that's one way of doing it so that your PVA, yeah, if you've got a large area, you don't have to do the entire area in one go. Yeah, you can do bit by bit and, and sort of increment it. All you gotta do is remember, just leave a good inch, two inch gap. Yeah, depending on the size of the piece for your actual, you know, your blending transition line. Yeah, you understand what I mean. You understand what I mean, folks, yeah? Yeah, so I've come in, come back in with this. Yeah, and we can just carry on just as if, yeah, we hadn't even stopped Amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Yeah. And so, if I give that a little bit of a shake, throw it off there. There we go. Beautiful texturing, dead easy. I could have used a lot of different varieties of grit like I did on this one. Yeah, but it's about showing you the techniques. And there you go. So, what to take from that is, if you are using it to put down a texture, okay, uh, gritting texture, that sort of stuff, mix some paint in there because you're probably gonna be going over white polystyrene or something that's had white filler on or white foam board, okay? Mix a bit of paint in there. One, it helps thin it down. Two, it helps show you where the PVA has actually gone down, okay? A little bit of water keeps it nice and thin. It stops those ridge lines. It lets the PVA soak up through the grit and bond the grit by not only just sticking the bottom of it, but encapsulating the grit. Okay, and really sticking it down, which improves the strength for less PVA. Yeah, the sort of strength of the bond. And finally, yeah, obviously, if you are doing, uh, what you call it, if you're using this to stick down flock, yeah, after you've painted and textured and done all that sort of stuff, skip the PVA, yeah, but the water and the flow improver, those things still stand. In fact, we'll show you those now. So we can use PVA to stick down all our grit and our boulders onto our pieces. And there's techniques that I've shown you that you can use for doing larger pieces and getting a better bond. But once it's actually stuck down and dry, what you're left with is something like this one that I showed in my example piece. Now this is unsealed, okay? Which means if I come along, I can break bits off relatively easy. Whereas if I get this one, and you can immediately notice on camera that this one's darker. If I come along, this one is a lot tougher and more difficult to break. That's, yeah, but it is breakable. 
yeah it's not indestructible but it's a lot tougher once it's been sealed now this has been sealed yeah with a solution a bit like this which is one part pva six parts water but there's something i wanted to show you okay now sealing them is, is dead simple it's just a matter of giving it a coat yeah spraying it on or putting it on with a brush but if you're putting it on with a brush Here's something to notice. Remember, PVA reactivates itself when it gets wet, i.e. it can completely dry, and then if you soak it, it becomes loose again. Okay, so coming down here, if I've got this bit, yeah, and I'm gonna texture it up, I'm gonna get my watered down PVA and I'm gonna rub it on there. Yeah, now this piece has been dry for months, months and months, over a year easily, yeah? But now it's actually wet, Okay, what I want to do is, I'm just gonna leave that for sort of 30 seconds. Now it's had a bit of a soak, yeah? It's had enough time for the water to actually start reactivating the PVA. So, if as I'm sealing this, I've gone along and I've brushed it all on, yeah, and I come back to touch up a bit that I've already done. What I risk doing is this. Yeah, now it's a little bit stiffer on this one, because I've only given it sort of 30 seconds. Give it a couple of minutes, it gets a lot worse. but. You start to see how there's white bits appearing, yeah? Basically, the PVA is reactivating, okay? And the longer this stays wet, the more reactivated it gets, yeah? To the extent that things will literally start to fall off it, okay? So, the point with that is, once you've got your texture down and you're coming in to seal it, it's a one pass job. You give it a coat of watered down PVA, yeah? You leave it to seal, if you've missed a bit, leave it okay don't mess with it simple as because if you do mess with it yeah you will disturb it you'll move it around you'll have a hell of a job now if you do happen to do this and you mess around yeah then what you can do is while you've got the sealing coat on if you come in with just a pinch of your grit yeah because it's watered down and that soaking it through thing again yeah you can apply and spot fix it Okay, so if you do disturb your grit whilst you're sort of sealing and that sort of stuff, yeah, remember while it's still wet, you can come in with a little bit of watch color grit and just sprinkle a little bit on, let it soak up and grip it, throw off the excess and it's all fine. Yeah, but one final thing before we move on from basically sealing texture. Now, obviously, if you look at these two pieces, yeah, they are unpainted. One thing you can do yeah, is sort of skip the sealing, what you call it, stage and go straight to the base coating stage. Now, base coating will help to seal it, but paint isn't a sealant as such. It's better off with a bit of PVA in there. So, if you get, say, four parts paint and one part PVA and you mix that up and then use that as your base coat, you will, one, you'll seal it, and two, your base coated. So essentially, you're skipping those two stages and amalgamating them into one. Remember that idea that with paint, it's exactly the same. If you give it a soak, come back to it after a little while, give it a brush, yeah, it will all move. Yeah, so remember that spot fixing technique. But there's some tips for you when it comes down to actually sealing your actual terrain. Remember, do it in a one pass. Yes, yeah, spray is better than an actual, what you call it, than an actual brush because you're not disturbing the grit with a spray. If you want to be really quick, mix it in with your base coat, get your base coat on it. But once again, remember, it's a one pass jobby until it's dry because it all reactivates. And if it does reactivate, have a little of your grit to your side, yeah, so you can quickly just sprinkle some on and fix it. Now, with that in mind, yeah, we've got it to the stage we've talked about PVA as basic construction, uh, applying uh, texture down, sealing the texture and base coating. The next time PVA comes into the mix is basically flocking and adding foliage. So, let's crack on with that, eh? So greening it up. Now, PVA is brilliant at this as well. Just like applying it as a, for texture and construction materials, PVA is our go-to choice for flocking and that sort of stuff. You can use spray adhesives and stuff like that, but you don't get the control or the solid bond yeah, uh, with spray adhesives. One, because the spray is indiscriminate, it's quite hard to control, whereas PVA, you can control it far better with a brush. And two, spray adhesives are contact adhesives. They don't 
soak through things. And so you, it's the same situation as using the raw PVA with sprinkling some grit on it and, and watering it down with a little bit of flow aid and letting that soak up through the grit. So with that in mind, I've got some materials down here. Yeah, and what I want to do is very quickly talk about, with regards to the materials on a little textured base, one of my CDs, yeah, we'll talk about the best ways of doing it. Now, when we look at the materials, we've got a few different materials. Now, with the tree, mm. yeah, because that's uh, what's your non-porous, I actually went with a super glue with that, yeah, to bond it down. So the rocks were actually glued down with raw PVA, yeah. Uh, good enough, it, it, it's not perfect, but it's strong enough to bond little rocks like that. Not so good on plastic, to be perfectly honest. The same with these clumps. This one, the, these sort of solid clumps, yeah, which is this clump material, yeah. Raw PVA is brilliant for gluing those down, but you pre we pretty typically glue them on top of a flock, yeah. Now, these, this lichen, okay, which is this stuff here, or reindeer moss, this can be quite challenging to glue with PVA because it's quite fabric and there's not many places to join in between and this is where this stuff comes in. Now I mentioned it at the start of the video, Mod Podge is PVA with a heavy gel in which means if you apply a blob of this down and then push your lichen into it, okay, because it's a gel it it, it sort of crosses the gaps far better and creates a far better bond. So, dense clump foliage, raw PVA, yeah, sort of sparsious clump foliage with lots of gaps and holes in, yeah, Mod Podge. Yeah, I recommend the matte one, not the gloss one. You don't want shiny bushes, do you? Or shine under your bushes, that doesn't look too good. But, one thing about the actual flock itself. Now, the flock itself, I am using, I've used, typically use this sort of stuff. Once again, watered down PVA, little bit of flow aid. You can use the alcohol once again, but it's the same thing with the vapors and that sort of stuff. Yeah, it's down to personal preference. But the reason why we use watered down PVA with the flock is exactly the same with the grit, okay? It's a smooth coating. Remember, flock is sawdust, so it will soak up through it really well okay, and give it a good solid bond. Now, I don't feel the need to actually demonstrate gluing things on, yeah? I'm pretty sure that, you know, you can glue things down, so we don't need to actually go through the steps here. But what I would like to do is just very quickly have a quick chat about sealing with PVA. So once all your, all your stuff's down and it's glued and it's dried, yeah, we've got to seal it. So let's have a look at sealing. and I like it and all that sort of stuff and our piece is completely dry and it's time to seal it. Now we seal it so that everything gets stuck together and bonded. A lot of hobbyists, diorama makers and railway makers don't bother sealing their terrain because it's not going to be handled whereas War Games terrain is going to get handled a hell of a lot and so we really need it to be sealed to sort of stick it down and make sure that it sort of lasts our play sessions, if you know what I mean, because you don't want your flock falling off halfway through a play session, do you? Okay, so with that in mind, yeah, let's talk about sealing. Now here what I've got is, I've got a little uh, slit trench from my Watch Your Let Makes videos. This one hasn't been sealed yet. I put it up after the video, and so it's perfect to show you. And what I've got is, I've got a little bit of paper, and I've got a bit of blue foam. Yeah, that's to rest that on. Now that's important, whenever you're sealing stuff with watered down PVA, remember the gravity will make it all run to the edges. And if it's sitting flat on something, what will happen is it will glue itself around whatever it's sitting flat to, whether it's, Paper, cardboard, your kitchen side, done that before, yeah? And so what we do is we simply place it and we raise it up so that when we've done it, any excess can just drip off onto something absorbent. Paper is good, cardboard is better, guys, from my experience, yeah? A couple of sheets, you can carry all your pieces round and that sort of stuff while they're still sealing that way. Large pieces, I often rest them on top of wargaming model pots, uh, uh, paint pots. Even, what you got, three of these, three little tester pots will make a great little stand for you to seal in because they're plastic so the PVA won't affect these. Okay, 
So with that in mind, yeah, that's just how to set it up. Let's talk about sealing itself. Okay, now when you're sealing flock or anything like that, yeah, PVA is the way to go. When it comes to sealing solid things such as large stonework, foam board houses, MDF kits, you want to be looking at a spray varnish, yeah, an acrylic matte spray varnish for those, yeah. That's because PVA, one, because they're not porous, it doesn't soak in, and, and because it doesn't soak in, all the PVA is left on the surface, and because PVA is a vinyl, yeah, essentially a plastic, yeah, it leaves like a shiny coating on it, yeah, and changes the colour on solid structures that it can't soak into. So with those, hit them with a spray varnish, yeah, you can do it. I recommend you do it after you've done your actual flocking in your PVA sealing and you just come along and spray wherever you need to spray. And that's on pieces where you've got, you know, large rock faces with greenery around. Okay, the reason why I recommend you spray after the PVA is because if you spray before the PVA, what you can do is you can give a coat over the top of the flock, yeah, which isn't really the best way of holding those things down, but that coat will stop the watered down PVA soaking in. So do the soaky in PVA first, and then do the spray sealer second. But with regards to the soaky PVA, Right. So we've got this, okay, and what I've got is I've got a number of different ways of applying it. What you could do is you could mix up your watered down PVA, yeah, anywhere from 1 to 6 to 1 to 10 is a good ratio, and you can apply it with a brush. Remember, if you apply it with a brush, the same rule about reactivating PVA applies. So if you apply it with a brush, it's a one pass job. Do not go back and mess with it while it's still wet or you will disturb it and then you may have to come in and sprinkle a bit more flock like we did with the texture, okay? But assuming you're gonna do it in, watch it, you're not gonna use a brush, so you're not gonna be disturbing it, you're gonna spray it. There's a number of options to spray it. Now, yeah, squirty bowls, first off. Yeah, you can get these posh scenic sprayers for about eight pound, absolutely useless. Yeah, you can get, if you're doing just a few small pieces, you can get these for 50 pence. It's a ladies squirty squirty, yeah? Uh, a, a misting bottle from the uh, cosmetics department in any sort of, any superstore. Yeah, it costs about 50 pence, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, okay? Stepping it up, we've got, uh, Window cleaner bottles. Window cleaner bottles are brilliant. Get them, They'll, they'll cost about a pound from the bargain shop. Get them, take off the top, give it a good wash out of the window cleaner because you don't want that getting mixed in with your watered down PVA. Mix in your watered down PVA and the other thing yeah, is drop a marble in it yeah, because over time if you're using this and you're letting it sit on the side, the PVA will sink to the bottom. Yeah, so putting a marble in it just means you can sort of shake it up. Generally, yeah, I don't leave it in the tub because of blocking issues. Now, the other thing that you can do is this long cable, yeah, you'll notice my cable goes nowhere near the bottom of my bottle. Yeah, once again, that's down to it thickening up. Yeah, even over the course of a build session, if I'm using this a couple of times, the PVA will thicken up down here. And the wire normally goes all the way to the bottom and curves around the bottom to make sure you can get the most out of the bottle. Yeah, but what that means for us with PVA is, as it thickens up, we start to pull thick PVA into it, which can block our mechanism. So cut it short. It will mean that you have to top the bottle up more, more often, but you'll have less problems with blocking. Finally, when you finish spraying with one of these, take this out, yeah, put the, the watch or the hose into just pure water and pump it through until you get pure water going all the way through. What you don't want is watered down PVA drying inside the mechanism because that will mess it up as well. Okay, now I should actually say that when I do most of my terrain work, I don't actually spray with bottles anymore, to be perfectly honest. Yeah, I use this. Okay, and this is a single action, which means basically you press the button, you get full blast of air. Yeah, external mix, i.e., yeah, 
but the stuff is mixed outside the airbrush so there's no cleaning inside the airbrush or things to get blocked or clogged yeah and it's a siphon feed which means it sucks out of the bottom bottle now the siphon feed isn't that important but the, the external mix is this is actually a hornby airbrush it costs about six pound and it is brilliant at doing this sort of stuff you can just all day long yeah and it just knocks them out of the park guys it really does it's a good bit of kit so if you're going to be doing a lot of terrain and you've got an airbrush yeah spend six quid and quid and pick yourself up one of these for your pva -ing. you can use a normal airbrush for, for your pva -ing, but the reservoir tends to be a bit too small i i i constantly find myself topping it up with what you call it with my normal airbrush yeah so this one allows me to bulk work Okay, but that you may turn around and say, well, I'm bosicle, that's all very well and good, but what happens if, yeah, I buy a spray bottle and I can't get that beautiful mist effect that you get? It squirts out in a single line, okay? That's quite common. It's one of the reasons why I use the window cleaner bottles because they're the best at getting that mist effect. But that's only with water. The moment you start to add PVA into a mix, you dense it up and it becomes harder to watch it to squirt as a mist. A couple of things that you can do to affect, to sort of adjust that. One, you can water it down a bit more, okay? The more water it is, the less dense it is, the more likely you are to get a mix. The second thing is you can add a bit of flow aid in there, either your acrylic Windsor Newton or a single drop, just one drop of dish detergent in a full bottle of that will act as a flow aid as well. Yeah, it's always a good idea that if you put a single drop in, yeah, obviously dish detergent makes bubbles, give it a good shake so you get most of the bubbles out of it straight from the off and then when it settles, it's just working as a flow aid. Yeah, now saying that, you may say, oh, all right then, what else you got for us, both? I've done that. I am just getting this solid single jet spray that's giving me like these this spot in, and I can't get a good even coated. Right. Well, in that case, there's some other solutions. And what you can do is fill this up, yeah, with just water and a little drop of detergent or flow aid, yeah. So it is what we call wet water. Yeah, I know wet water, but it's what we call wet water. Give your piece a good coating with it so it's soaking wet. Then, while it's soaking wet, come along with one of these. Now, if you're doing big boards, turkey baster, yeah, you can go with syringes or you can go with a pipette. But basically, when it's wet, what you can do is you can come in and you can drop your PVA straight down onto that wetness, okay? And the water will carry the PVA to where it needs to go and be bonded. Always drop it at the, what you call it, the toppest points and let it run down. Remember, gravity won't let it run up. So unless you put it at the top, yeah, the top ain't gonna to be sealed. All right, guys? And remember that gravity takes it down, sticky to the base thing as well, yeah? Very important, especially if you're doing the wet technique because it tends to be a lot more moisture than just simply spraying it, okay? Now, uh, buh, 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 buh. what you can do is you can spray it with water and if you don't wanna come in with any of these, yeah, you can hot spot it with a spray. If this is just shooting a straight line, water, a little bit of a watch up detergent for a flow aid, give it a soaking, yeah, add your PVA into the mix, give it a shake, and then when it's firing as a, a direct line, yeah, you can watch call it, you can hot spot it and do it that way. Now finally, I'm just gonna give this a quick blast so you can see what it looks like yeah, as it gets sealed. And in fact, what I'm gonna try and do now is I'm gonna try and cover half of it so you can see the difference between sealed and unsealed. So if I grab this, yeah, and we come down here, yeah, I'm gonna place that on there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give that a good soak. Yeah, so there we go. So if I bring that up, you can immediately see, yeah, if I turn this round, see how it's dripping off? And you can see the green dripping off, that'll be the PVA. But if I bring this up, yeah, empty that bit out. Yeah, do you see the difference? Do you see how the PVA has activated that, that flock? It's dripping green on my hand. That, that's because I use a Jarvis premium range and it's supposed to do that. It's not color fixed. And that's because this will help the actual flock blend and end up looking much nicer. Yeah, but what we need to do now is we need to let this dry so I can show you, you know, the actual effects of sealing it. So, uh, we'll be back in just a second, guys. 
So it's all dry now, and if I bring it up to the camera, yeah, you can see. And you can probably clearly tell the difference between the halves. Yeah, this side, the colours are much better because they've blended a lot better. But more importantly, everything's firmer, a lot firmer. So if I bring it around here, yeah, spongy, 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 stiffy, stiffy, stiffy. Okay, yeah, nice and solid. And this will stand up to your wargaming really well. Now, there's quite a possibility that you could do a sealing coat and it doesn't really seal as much as you'd like. Yeah, in that case, all you need to do is wait for the piece to be completely dry and just apply another coat. Don't apply it while it's wet. That reactivation thing still applies. So while it's wet, it's still loose. And if you hit it with another sealing coat, the actual force of the spray hitting it can move the flock. So as always, the rule applies. Apply once, let it dry, then work on it, okay? Now, there are a couple other little points here. Now, obviously, as you look at it, we've got these clumps. Now, the sealing coat has gone down and it's gone really nice and firm here and firmed everything up. Okay, but the clumps could do with being a bit firmer. What you can do is come in with your syringe with say, say a, a one part PVA, three parts water mix, and just literally inject a little into your individual clumps. Yeah, and that will stiffen them up greatly, yeah? It, it's just the, the simple matter that when you do a spray sealing coat, it's only a surface coat, and sometimes you need to get a bit more volume in there to stiffen up the clump foliage and that sort of stuff. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. that's pretty much sealing. Let's wrap this up. So folks, that brings us to the end of this Pro PVA Tips for Terrain Builders, I think I'm going to call this one. But basically, pretty much everything I know about PVA and where I am with using PVA in my terrain building. So, yeah, uh, you know everything, guys. Yeah? Above all, PVA is a brilliant watch look glue, but it works best on non-porous stuff, whether it's gluing it or whether it's sealing it, yeah. MDF, gluing together pieces of MDF with raw PVA works well, but when it comes to sealing it and that sort of stuff, you can have problems. Same with rock structures and that sort of stuff, yeah. Hard castings, they don't glue that well with PVA, and if you apply a wash coat to them, they can go a little bit glossy. Remember, you can use a little bit of Mod Podge, the, the matte version, because that's got a matting agent in to matte that gloss down a bit, but at the same time, you can also get something like a matte medium and throw that in the mix. Above all, when you're working with PVA, especially if it's watered down, whether it's watered down with paint, whether it's watered down with alcohol, or whether it's watered down with water or wet water. Yeah, do it once, don't touch it till it dries, don't disturb it. If you do, while it's still wet, you can come in and do a little bit of sprinkling, a bit of fixing, but it's best to leave it till it dries. And then if you need to apply another layer or seal it or do anything more, do it again, but leave it till it dries so you're not risking that disturbance, yeah? Because it's a pain in the backside, guys, it really is. Okay, and that's it, guys. That's essentially pretty much where Everything PVA. Yeah, avoid the builder's stuff. Stick with Baker Ross washable. That's my recommended, yeah? If it's the first time using Baker Ross, do a couple of test pieces because the difference in strength between normal PVA, craft PVA, and Baker Ross is considerable. Yeah, and you need to understand how that will affect your terrain. But generally, water it down a bit more, yeah? If you do have a really watered down PVA, yeah, and you'd like to thicken it up, remember, it's watered down with just water. So if you spread it all out into a large dish, stick it on the side in the kitchen, and then just go along every sort of hour or so and give it a bit of a stir to stop the top forming a skin, yeah, the water will evaporate out and it will go thicker, so you can actually pour it back in. Quite often you'll hear people talking about tacky glue, yeah, that's my version of tacky PVA. Just dehydrate the PVA a little, just dry it off, you know, get some moisture out of it, get it nice, thick and sticky and it becomes tacky PVA, guys. Another tip there for you. I don't think I've got anything else to give you guys. I've given you everything I know on PVA. Now, these are these videos are the ones where my friends encourage me not to because I'm essentially giving the competition everything I know. 
Yeah, but that's not what I'm on this channel for. I'm on this channel to help you guys build terrain. So, yeah, I really do help. hope this information has helped you. Now, obviously, yeah, if it has helped you, if you've got any questions or anything like any tips or anything like that in the comments, like, share as always. If this has helped you, yeah, then please, guys, consider jumping on Patreon or PayPal down below, yeah? Or a dollar a month on Patreon, yeah? A one-off via PayPal link down below. Yeah, it all helps me do all this and share this knowledge and everything I'm learning and that sort of stuff with you. And if you guys are professional builders, yeah, and you know, you use these tips to improve your business and you know, how you make money and that sort of stuff, I've got no problem with that guys, but do me a favor, at least jump on the Patreon link, yeah, and send me a dollar a month. Consider it a research and development fund. Yeah, it's the good thing to do. Yeah, in the meantime, guys, we're going to wrap this up now. We've got trenches coming next week, so hold on to your hats. They're looking good. And in the meantime, I'll say I will see you soon. All the best, Terraniacs. Ta-da.